Hello, I'm Ed Leake. Your time's precious, so that's the intro done. I'm going to start off by talking about a couple of common scenarios and questions, just to get the fundamentals out of the way about using smart bidding on new accounts and campaigns, because these questions come up regularly in my private group. And then I'll walk you through the step-by-step uh, -step framework, the flowcharts. So a question I often get asked is, can you use smart bidding on a brand new account so it's never been run before? And honestly, there's no right or wrong answer to this. It can, there's too many variables, essentially. So if anyone tells you there's a definite, definitive way on the type of bidding you should use on a brand new account, they're lying. I've seen, managed, worked on, audited hundreds, if not thousands of accounts over the past 12 years. Um, I know smart bidding's not been around that long, but the fact is there are so many variables. Every website, every brand, every product, service, it's there are nuances, they're all different. So it's a trial and error situation. I've seen accounts tank in performance, going straight for smart bidding. I've seen some accounts work perfectly fine. Manual bidding is the safe bet. We know this. So you can set a, a limit to your bid and you can ease into those impressions and just test the water. So you're dipping a toe with manual bids, hopefully to get some conversions. There is a, a tell that smart bidding might work from the off, and that's a an established uh, website, company, brand, whatever we want to call it, that um, already has direct and organic traffic converting. So if you can look back over the past three, six months, and you see that the organic traffic is converting at, say, 3%, then it's normally a good sign that smart bidding might be okay out of the box. But again, it comes down to keyword selection and targeting, ad copy, landing pages where you send people, and all the bits in between. So if you do that job well, then you put the odds in your favor for it to, to work, obviously. Because target CPA really is quite simple. It's a case of if you're hitting your budget limits, then you can lower it to get more incremental conversions in that budget. So if your budget's up here and you keep hitting the roof, drop your TCPA. And on the opposite side, if your uh, cost conversions are too high and you're not even able to spend the budget, then it's more of a diagnosis uh, situation to understand why, uh, which is why I created the framework. Now, target ROAS is even more particular um, because it needs revenue data, it needs that um, monetary data coming into the account. So ROAS is even more finicky. In fact, I wouldn't start on target ROAS. Very rarely I'd start on target ROAS. Target CPA, maybe. Max conversions, some people say, well, start on that. The thing you need to understand about max conversions is your budget is essentially your cap on your bid. So if you set a $10 a day budget, that's your cap. Theoretical cap. Google won't always bid up to $10, um, but it can. So if you set your budget to $100 or $1,000 a day, you are lifting your maximum bid considerably and it's a surefire way particularly with a large campaign to burn through the budget very very quickly max clicks is similar um, and you could argue well we can add a, a cap to it but a cap is a target cpa or a target ROAS, so therefore they are no longer maximize conversions or maximize clicks they are essentially a, a smart bidding to a, a ROAS or a cost conversion target However, um, smart bidding on a brand new campaign in an existing account is okay. If that account has data, conversion data, then, uh, and you say it's all manual, so you've been running an account for three months, six months, six years, whatever, on pure manual bids, and you decide to run target CPA on a campaign, well, the smart bidding will use the conversion data, the metrics, the hidden layer uh, in Google's black box behind the scenes, from the account to uh, help bring your target CPA up to speed. And that's true of target ROAS as well. So it will use the entire account's data. So it can work in that respect. And finally, a question that comes up is, well, we've only got 10 conversions a month. We've got a very small number of conversions. We're on manual bidding um, or we're on max conversions or whatever. And can we move to target CPA or target ROAS? The answer is, maybe so it's a test you have to test these things no one can tell you specifically what to do but target cpa will typically work it used to require a lot more data it's got a lot better google's improved over time so you can now jump into target cpa a lot quicker than you did before so 10 conversions across the account might be enough it might be sufficient 
Target ROAS, I'd still say you want 30, 40, maybe 50. You need more data for target ROAS to be uh, reliable and consistent, whereas target CPA um, is a lot more elastic is probably the word. I mean, you can set a target CPA of 50 and have a budget of 25 a day, which doesn't sound logical. It's like, well, my target CPA is higher than my daily budget, but it might actually work. And I've seen it work like that. So those are the sort of Q and A's out of the way. And let's now jump into the framework, which is the interesting bit and the bit that you probably came for, not me rattling on. on, 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 on. <laughs>